this is where the anchor, John 3, 14 to 16. You know, the anchor on spiritual facts. The Lord said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Whosoever believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. And this one we are all very familiar. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So this is really anchoring on spiritual fact. We believe, we believe the Lord will put his Holy Spirit in us. You know, we are born again. And that is the assurance. Yeah. Then next is after being born again, what next? Ah, the next is an encounter. Remember the Samaritan woman in John 4.23. Yeah. Well, would, uh, maybe, Bula, would you like to read this? John 4.23. It's unmute. Yeah. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Amen. Amen. So you see, when we are born into the kingdom, right? Born again. Next thing is we straight away have a relationship with the Father. You know how many today in church uh, don't have this understanding that first thing the Lord wants is relationship. How we relate to Him. And we must relate to Him in spirit and in truth. Here, the Lord talks about worshipping, but even... Where we relate, you know, we call out to the Heavenly Father. We are relating to Him in spirit and in truth. You know, you if you just take one step back, you go to church, you see, actually many people put on a face, look very good, but inside there are a lot of turmoil, you know, and that is not that way. That's why when we come before the Lord, there is that transparent, you know, that relationship. Lord, you know what I'm going through. And the Lord will deal with us. This is where we will have the peace of the Lord. No matter what we are going through, we know that we are rightly related, re relating to Him. <clears throat> the sons of Sadok, we talked about this in the early uh, part, you know, on how... They relate. The Lord just want us to draw near and minister to me. So how? And you, if you read that portion in Ezekiel 44, you know, they must uh, not clothe themselves with anything that causes sweat. So, you know, this is where our time with him, we don't need to hurry. We don't need to feel so uh, oppressed and all that. We come in simplicity and relate to him. And the Lord love it when he say, come, draw near to me. You know, when the Lord was at the cross, remember the curtains were split open. Every one of his children have that access. If we don't use it, the Lord has already secured for us. And if we miss it, you know, we allow ourselves to go through. In fact, recently we are counseling with uh, uh, someone that went through also a very difficult time, feel very depressed, want to take their own life and all that. But, you know, this is where they miss the very basic foundation. How do we relate to the Father? Yeah. So the second thing is break relationship with God. Then the third one, you know, after that, we need to be alive, right? Like we need to eat and drink physically. Now it's a spiritual part, the basic of sustenance of life, the eating part. Yeah, yeah. So uh, John 6 tells us about the bread of life, verse 33. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven 
and gives life to the world. Then you read further now, verse 35. The Lord said, I am the bread of life. You know, the bread of life is the word made flesh. Yeah. And you read the whole chapter, you will see the emphasis. Eat of me. Eat of me. And this we are partaking of the living bread. Yeah. And nourishing our spiritual man. You know, and then to store it. Remember uh, over uh, the last session, we talked about John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance, my remembrance, all things that Jesus said to you. So when we eat, we actually read, meditate, store. We may not remember all of it, but Holy Spirit is going to bring it out. Now, much more, just by reading God's Word, we are being uh, fed and that we are kept alive spiritually. If you don't agree, you know, for instance, you take one week, you don't read God's Word, you will feel weak spiritually. Yeah. And this is where the enemy love it. They come and distract us. You do a lot of things that looks urgent and all, and we miss it. So, first part is eating. The second part, you know, well, you know, again, after we feed on God's word, you know, and all the word that come, the, the word will reveal to us. You know, Hebrews 11, 3, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You know, the faith, true, the words, that the words were framed by the word of God. Just pause for a moment. You look up to the sky. You look up, you know, oh, you know, the word of God. Remember, this brings us to Genesis. Yeah, the Lord spoke and it come into being. The heavens and the earth were created. Yeah, and the, the, the word of God framed it. Yeah, and Jesus was the word of God then before the word became flesh. Right? Hebrews 4.12. Yeah. Uh, why, why would you like to read this? Okay. Uh, Hebrews 4, verse 12. Yeah, 4.12. Okay. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And, you know, this, just this verse alone tells us how powerful the word of God is. You know why people cannot rest? A few restless. You know, when we are when we come to faith all, you know, our soul and our spirit actually are linked together. We need the word of God to separate. If they are linked together, usually the soul takes over. Yeah. When the word of God cut through, the spirit is free to contact the Lord. And as a result, the spirit leads the soul. You see the difference there? That's why you meet people, Christians, they are very soulish. You know the component of the soul, it talks about the emotion, the intellect, the mind, the will. You get people who are very strong will. Yeah, and I like to sort of uh, uh, put this, you know, in terms of uh, an example. I will leave one you. It's a perfect soulish man. His will, wow, you know, he says so, it is so. And then his intellect, matchless. You know, even uh, the world leaders also come and seek him, you know, and all. And then emotion. When we, Singapore was kicked out of Malaysia, you can see that truly, you know, he was really emotional about it. 
you know, all these things here tells us that the soulish man can do a lot of things. Yeah, but think about it: as the spiritual man is even greater, right? So we really need to look at that. And then much more, the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Sometimes you talk to someone, you know, you, you may not understand fully, but the word of God is going to witness that, hey, you know, the intent of the heart is like that. Yeah. So again, this is where we begin to understand what is the inner man and the outer man. Uh, I, 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 I think this is, again, something that we can learn a lot from. And of course, the power of God's word, you know, is fire. Uh, in uh, Je uh, Jeremiah 5.14, Wherefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and these people would, and it shall devour them. How oh, the prophet, you know, speak this through. And burning fire, Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. So, you know, he was disappointed. He won't mention about God. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Now, that's how powerful God's word is. You know, sometimes we just don't want to speak, but the word of God just burn in our hearts. And this is an experience that Jeremiah felt. Likewise, it could be. Then further now, it's fire and hammer. The Lord said in uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 29, it's not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Think about it. That's the power of God's word. Isn't that amazing? That's why, you know, uh, when uh, this whole sessions, the following session, they're talking about the word of God. Remember, the word of God is so powerful. Huh? Then we see how it impact on the kingdom. You read the book of Acts, yeah, and you know, the word of God increased, Acts 6, 7, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. It start off the increase in the word of God. So when we want to reach out, the word of God is in our mouth. You know, and as we share, the word of God is going to touch lives, precious. And then you see at that time, the number of disciples multiplied. Acts 12, 24, the same thing. The word of God grew and multiplied. How come, you know, the word of God works so powerfully in the early church. Today, he will work in our churches only when is given central place. And Acts 19.20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So you go through the book of Acts, you see, wow, it's amazing how the word of God is so strong in the move of the Holy Spirit and the word. Yeah, Remember uh, in last uh, week, uh, the Lord, uh, through the Holy Spirit, point to the Lord and also he is going to use the word powerfully to convict the people and also to touch people's lives. Second Timothy 2 9 wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer even unto bond but the word of God is not bound. Uh, this was Paul writing to Timothy and he was saying that, yeah, you know, in prison, he suffered. And as if he's an evildoer. <laughs> but nothing can keep him. So even in prison, the word of God is so powerful. 
you know, I had opportunity to go to China, meet up with men. In fact, the Chinese believers, the older ones, many of them went to prison and they can testify that truly there's such power in the word of God and it is not bound. I mean, like we all met Brother Yun. Uh, he is one of those, you know, there are many others. So that is the power of God's word. Yeah. Next. After you eat, you need to drink, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe uh, Jesse, would you like to read this portion? Uh, okay. John 7, yeah. John 7, 37 to 39. Yes. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. Amen. So, you see, how the flow of scriptures, huh? after you eat the living bread, you drink the living water. And this is the invitation that the Lord gave, you know, on the last day of the feast. Uh, and he said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. My brothers and sisters, you know, this is the position that all of us would lo love to be in. Yeah, that really, and what needs to be done, we come to him, drink. You know, and the Lord promise is that out of our heart or our belly will flow for rivers of living water. And the Lord is referring to the Holy Spirit. At that point when he spoke, your disciple hearing it, you, you, you won't understand fully because the Spirit had not been given yet. Right? But now, imagine John the one who recorded all this, he understood it fully. And we, putting ourselves as a disciple, we also understand this fully. We need to eat of the living bread. We need to drink of the living water. And we will see that difference. Okay. So, so after the feeding and drinking, what do we do? We stand up and walk, right? You see the progression of things in the natural. So it is in the spiritual. Yeah. And John 8, 12. Yeah. Uh, Esther, uh, would, may, would you like to read John 8, 12? John 8, 12. Jesus is the light of the world. He that follow me will not walk in the darkness, but have the light of the light. Amen. Now Amen. this, again, you know, from chapter 7 to chapter 8, uh, this is an account of uh, the, a woman that uh, caught in adultery, but they all wanted the stone and all, so the Lord said, you know, uh, one by one, move away when the Lord uh, tell them who has not seen cast the first stone. And everyone get convicted. And the Lord said to the woman, you know, neither will I condemn you. Then he starts telling them, he that follow me, you know, he says, sin no more. And then he that follow me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of light. Isn't it amazing? He was telling this woman that everyone condemned, but he's telling her, look, follow me. And that, you know, I am the light of the world. You follow me and you will not walk in darkness, but have the light of light. So when we walk in his light, you know, there is the inner dealing and out of that, the outer expression of our light. That's why you remember our session in Matthew 5, the Beatitude. After living out the Beatitude, yeah, what happens? The Lord said, you are 
the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So here, the Lord is telling us, walk and we need to walk in his light. So when we walk in his light, we will not be lost. In this world, many are lost. In fact, right now you see COVID time. You walk out, many people uh, are feeling a sense of loss, hopelessness and all that. But we walk in the light of Jesus. We will be we have the light of life and we are able to manifest that light. Remember the sessions that Sister Jessica took us to? Yeah, you know, that uh, depression and all, you know, overcoming all that. Now, we walk in the light of Jesus. We have that light of life. Yeah. Okay. Now, after we walk, we also need to be guided yeah to hear his voice yeah so maybe john 10 27 uh jessica would you like to read and also isaiah 50 uh, yes I will yeah. Go. yeah john 10 27 my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me isaiah 54 b he awakens me morning by morning he awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Amen. Amen. So here again, you see, after the walking, we need to be refreshed. We need to hear the voice of our shepherd. And the Lord said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. So the Lord wants to speak to us all the time. You know, there will be uh, some who say, oh, you know, uh, I have difficulty in hearing and all that. No, think about it. The Lord speaks to us all the time. That's why Isaiah 50, verse 4, the second part. You know, he, he said, he awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learner. So every morning, the Lord will awaken us. He wants to speak to us. And if we choose to shut our ear, if we choose to go occupy ourselves with a lot of other things, then, you know, there's not much that the Lord can do. We exercise our will, right? But we try that, try that. Lord, you know, I stand on your word. You awaken me morning by morning. Yeah. You awaken my ear to hear. So you claim this word and say, Lord, speak to me. And then you will begin to experience at that time. That's why, remember, we went to the foundation in Matthew. You know, that closet time with the Lord. When we don't get distracted by handphones, don't get distracted by a lot of other things, you know, or let your mind be preoccupied. Ah, yeah, today there are so much things to do. Dismiss all that. Have that quality time with the Lord. You will see the Lord begin to speak. Yeah. Next. The most difficult part. You know, this is where, having done all that, there's still one big block. This is self. So the Lord speaks in John 12, verse 24 to 25. He talks about the grain or wheat analogy. Yeah. Maybe uh, Sister Elsie, would you like to read uh, verse 24 to 25? Unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Okay. John, 20, uh, John 12, verse 24 to 25, a uh, grain of wheat anal analogy. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides uh, alone. But when it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. He that loves his life will lose it. He that hates his life in this world will keep it unto, unto life eternal. Amen. Amen. So, 
what the Lord is telling us, okay, you have done all this, you hear my voice and all, oh, there's still one more thing that needs to be that way. This is the self-life. He gives the analogy about the wheat, grain of wheat that fall to the ground and die. Unless it does that, it abide alone. But when it die, it brings forth much fruit, verse 24. And verse 25, the revelation come. Our soul life. If we love our soul life, we will lose it. And that means we literally, you know, although we are born again, but we allow the soul to lead. And as a result, you know, the spirit is unable to lead because the soul very much is a self-life that would exercise all that. Then he said, he who hates his life in this world will keep it until life eternal. So this is a picture that, you know, not that we hate ourselves uh, to the point where, you know, we also uh, lose our identity, we lose our um, self-worth and all that. No. What the Lord is saying is that, you know, hate our soul life. Yeah. And that we will be able to keep it because we will be spirit-led. We will be uh, able to hear from the Holy Spirit. We'll be able to move in tandem with the Spirit. Yeah. Then, finally, all this done uh, is evidence how Jesus demonstrated the outflow of life. Yeah, John 13. You know, he was washing the disciples' feet. So you see, uh, from John 2, all the way progressing, I'm sure you can glean a lot more. What I'm doing is a summary for you, which is talking about our walk, our journey with Jesus. Huh? So the Lord showed, he washed the disciples' feet. It's a life of humility and service. So John 13, 14 tells us, if I, then your Lord and teacher, can wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Remember, this also tie back to our study in Matthew. First thing is humility. You know, and that life of humility, after we experience the Lord, we continue to remain humble. Allow the Lord to work through. And then, as we serve, we will see there's going to be transformation. There's going to be powerful release of life and Holy Spirit moving. Remember at one time, I think I went through you all on uh, uh, how the Egyptian brothers and sisters, the, uh, the leaders, the Egyptian leaders, they come together at the cave church and they begin to wash one another's feet. Wow, the Holy Spirit breaks through. You know, all, and they repented before the Lord. He said, Lord, we misrepresent you before the world. And when they, in truth, humility and contriteness, that was a breakthrough. That was a beginning of revival in the Egyptian church. And we saw, it was amazing. All the churches, people begin to flock in. And, you know, to me, that was very special because Egypt is the mother of, represented by Sarah, the mother of Ishmael. So when uh, Egypt experienced revival, it is a matter of time before the sons of Ishmael in the Arab nations uh, is going to come to faith. Yeah. So in the same way for us, after we journey the Lord, remember that life of humility and service is what we'll see, we'll see breakthrough. And then finally, John 14, verse 12 to 13. Yeah. And the Lord this is the one that we read, uh, the first part, yeah? Uh, that the Lord said, Most assuredly, I said to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. 
greater works than this will he do because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Isn't that amazing? So when we journey with the Lord, you know, in conclusion, we just see that uh, how each of these uh, the apostles, they experienced what the Lord had said. Remember Peter, you know, in uh, Luke 22, 31. The Lord said, Peter, Peter, Satan is going to save you like wheat. But I'm praying for you. And what happened? You see in Acts 4, 13. The first miracle recorded in the book of Acts after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, is the people saw well, Peter and John, there was this uh, lame person, and he said, you know, uh, silver and gold and none, what I have I give to you, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. That caused a commotion. And the people all, uh, they were wondering, he said, you know, they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained and they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. So come back to that, you know, our walk with the Lord. Walk precedes work. Don't compromise on that. Continue to walk with Him. Yeah, and then, you know, the testimony of Peter, they had been with Jesus. Then remember, the Lord said, you know, after you overcome, go and strengthen your brethren. So how did Peter strengthen the brethren? So you see he write in, the, in his epistles, yeah, in Second Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter a born servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So it's addressing to a group of, you know, the church there. You know, you have same faith. You obtain the likewise, you know, precious faith with us. So no different. He may be the apostle teaching, but the faith through Christ is the same. Yeah. And then how he go on to encourage them, you know, two verses down, he talks about his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who call us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, to paraphrase that, you know, I highlight the three parts. First thing, the Lord, through his divine power, has given us all things, Divine power that give us pertaining to divine life. We have the life of God in us. Divine power, divine life. And then all that goes through that we are partakers of the divine nature. So divine power, divine life, divine nature. Think about it, you meditate on this verse, say, wow, Lord, I lack nothing. Spiritually, truth, I lack nothing. I have like precious faith as the apostles. And I have that divine power, the divine power that give me that divine life. And I am partaker of the divine nature. You and I, my brothers and sisters, we have that divine nature. We have we are partakers. And that's why we can witness to people because not because of who we are, but it's because of 
who God made us to be in Christ. Yeah. Then next we see another apostle, testimony of Paul. You know, Paul actually spent three years with the Lord. You read Galatians 1. He was in Arabia three years. That's why Paul was able to say in uh, Corinthians uh, 11, remember that we often quote that when we break bread. And I, as I receive from the Lord, and I say to you, Paul wasn't at the upper room when the Lord break bread. And how can he say all this? He came, he was in that time of wilderness and with the Lord for that three years. So you and I, you know, when we walk with the Lord, you know, don't rush. Let the Lord minister to us. And what was the outcome of his life? Acts 19, 11. Yeah, you see, now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the disease left, and the evil spirits went out of them. Wow. Can you see this power? Greater works will you do than this. Huh? All you need is a handkerchief to touch Paul and then take it away. Wow, you were able to do all this. <laughs> you think hey, today anything like that? Yeah, maybe the same spirit will work depending on the level uh, to the level of faith. Huh? And Paul accredit this to the treasure in Second Corinthians four seven. In fact, the whole chapter you should read through. You find that. Paul defined, you know, we go to shipwreck, we go to all kinds of things, which, you know, he wasn't discouraged because we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You and I are earthen vessels, but we have the treasure, the spirit himself. And the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Uh, I hope tonight, you know, even as soak in the word of God, we begin to see who we are in Christ, what Christ wants us to do. Greater works will you do than this. Yeah. So in summary, you know, uh, we need to ask questions here. The series from John 2 to John 14. You know, born again, where are you in your journey? Am I leaving? having that living relationship with the Father. What does it mean? You know, I can just relate to the Father in spirit and in truth in such a loving, intimate way. And then, are you and I feeding on His Word and drinking the living water? Yeah. So this series that... Uh, El Shaddai prayer altar is encouraging, you know, to read his word. We are feeding on his word. And we will see it's going to bring us life, bring us power. And of course, the word of God cleanses us. And you read further now on John, uh, you are clean because of the word that I speak to you, the Lord said. And then our walk, you know, we don't just walk any oh how we walk in his light yeah so are we walking in his light or we are fumbling all over then we need to come back to his word and hear what the lord said to us and then hearing his voice we will be sharpened each time you know when we hear and obey the lord will even download much more because he look at children of obedience. Yeah. So you hear the voice of God. Uh, don't, it's not for us to go and trumpet and say, wow, you know, the Lord speak this and that. But what is the outcome? When God speaks, he has his purpose. And then, life of crucified self, or still struggling with self. 
Yeah, and I think this is where the Lord tells us in John 12, 24, 25. We want to bear, bear for much fruit. And that is So we, the self want to do a lot of things, and when the self work, the spirit is grief. He's left sitting in a corner, you know. That's why the Bible tells us about uh, do do not grieve the Holy Spirit, and then finally, life of humility and service. Yeah. So you know this series that we will be embarking on reading God's word. Remember the uh, here the Holy Spirit. So what I've taken you through from John two to John fourteen. Remember the Holy Spirit is the ultimate author of His word. So when we have time with the Holy Spirit, He's the author. He will also be the revelator. He will reveal to us. Yeah, and every word of God is in and purposeful is not put in there to fill up the book it is put in there for his purpose that's why the lord said the word that i speak to you john 6 63 is spirit and is life you know the word of god is spirit and life so this is how precious god's word and Remember also, when we go through John 2 to John 14, there is a flow of thoughts. Yeah, It may be a series of meetings, but that punchline that come out, the Lord is showing to us. You know, and that journey, that walk is so important. So my encouragement, if I end this, is that the time span in meditation of his word will deepen our understanding and our spiritual depth. You know, we will never lose out. So the encouragement to us, journey on, you know, and as what uh, Brother Han encouraged us, you know, the walk precedes the work. And we, with this, I want to, yeah, then back uh, this time, I hope that you all can see also, I mean, this uh, series is when the Lord put in my heart and said, you know, this is something that I want you to share with my people. And yeah. hope you all can see the importance of it. Okay, so I hand back the meeting. Uh, any points or anything that you want to clarify? Uh, feel free.